This is the sixth module in the series on test automation with Playwright. In this module, we're going to be looking at web forms. I'm just going to pause here briefly for a disclaimer. I'll let you pause your own video and take as long as you want. Okay, you will need to have completed the first module, which was 01 software setup, if you want to follow along with the code. And the code is available from GitHub. There'll be a link in the video description. If you previously got the code from GitHub, I've made some updates uh, for this module, so you'll need to do a git pull and an npm install. In this module, we're going to cover the work in two parts. The first part will be covering how you set values for web forms. And in the second part, we'll be covering the submit where you submit the values you put in the web form which will go to the, the server for processing. Let's talk about set. Now there's certain web form DOM elements which are specifically created for web forms. Uh, there were some original ones back in uh, HTML. But in HTML5, the set of DOM elements has been expanded. And what they do, they are there to collect user input and they send that collected input to the web server for processing. Now, if you look through the HTML, you'll see the web form is identified by the form DOM element. Within that form element, you will see a number of input DOM elements. This is where the user input is collected. As well as input, there's also select and text area. However, input is the main one. And the input element is separated out by having a type attribute. and Available types are text, which is just a text field, text area where we can have more than one line, checkbox and radio buttons where we just literally put a check mark, date and time, number, URL, email, and there's also um, submit, which is just a button, and that's what's going to be used to submit the web form. Now, in the test web app, in the code that accompanies um, these modules and it's available on GitHub. In the test web app, you'll see a section. I'm sorry, this is pretty small, but it's difficult to squeeze it all in. You'll see a section at the top called Web Forms. If you run the test web app, you'll see this. And what I've tried to do is put um, quite a large selection of the available uh, DOM elements w which are used for web forms. Don't worry if you can't see that. We're going to be going into more detail on these, so don't worry about it. All right, we're still on set. Let's dig a little deeper into setting and checking web form values. Now, the first ones are what I call the texty values. Um, these are things like text field, email, password, search, number. Isn't strictly texty, but just to try and put some definition around things, phone, date, time. And, um, y you know, there was also text area and URL, which I couldn't uh, fit in. Now, in terms of playwright test, for these texty type values over here, you're going to want to be using page.type, the locator, which will identify which uh, DOM element you want to set the value for, and then the value you want to set. There is an alternative. There's also a page.fill uh, function you can call. I don't use this. I prefer type. I don't think there's any difference I know about between these, but I just thought I'd mention it in passing. So page.type is the, the one, the function you'll want to use for these type of values. And to check them, 
you'll be wanting to use the expect function with a locator for whichever um, element and then you'll want to have the matcher to have value and the value you want to check for. Now the previous module we covered expect matches and these together form an assertion so I'm not going to go into that here see the previous mod module uh, if you want to um, get more info on those so that was texty values checkboxes and radio buttons which I show here the checkbox you can have one or more checked and for radio buttons they're exclusive only one radio button can be selected at a time for these you'll want to use page check to set them or uncheck if you want to set one you previously set and if you want to, um, to, to check the value you'll want to use the expect function with the matcher to be checked select which is shown here where you can select one or if it's configured a certain way more than one uh, option for this you'll want to use the page dot select option give the locator to identify the select DOM element and then the value and expect is like the taxi ones where you just have expect and then to have value for the matcher. One thing you do have to be careful of and this does catch um, people out occasionally is that when you specify the value that you want to select uh, this is the HTML you'll want to be using the value for whichever one you want to select you do not want to use the label you can see the label here is option space 2 but to select that you would want to use the value which is option 2 all one word and um, th that will work for you okay those are the main ones I'm gonna cover two other ones which come up and these tend to cause people some problems um, the color field or the color DOM element okay what will happen is you'll see something like this uh, might be a different shape when you click on it this color selector will appear now you can do a couple of different things here but um, I always believe that simple works so what I do I simply set the value via JavaScript so I would use page dot dollar eval which is how we can execute some JavaScript the locator for the color field or color DOM element and then what you have here is um, the JavaScript code which I'll want to run E will be the DOM element and playwright will pass that in for you and V will be the value which will be the color that you want to select what you have to do is you can see I'm passing the value in here and this would be my JavaScript function I would have the JavaScript code to set the value the DOM element will be passed in by playwright but you pass your value afterwards by putting a comma and then uh, whatever the argument name is and then that will be put into um, the argument list for your JavaScript code and you'll want to use something like e.value or domelement.value and then whatever it is uh, you check the values uh, should you wish to just use an expect and then the matcher is to have value I'll be um, I'll be demoing these in um, just a second so you'll get some more detail on that in fact this is um, an extract from the code I'll be demoing all I've done here is for that color field 
I've created some constants with the hexadecimal uh, color value. Then I simply make uh, an array. And what I do then is I loop through all these different uh, values, which are all these different colors. And for each one, then I set the color field uh, to that value. It's just a way of demonstrating you know, what's going on. OK, set and check a range field. Now, again, this like the color field. There's a couple of different ways you can do this, but I'm going to show you what I think is the simplest way to do it, which is, again, to use JavaScript. So in my function here, I've created a function where I'm going to pass in a value. This is basically the same as what we saw for the color field. I'm going to use page dot dollar eval to evaluate some JavaScript. The locator for the, the range DOM element. Again, this is basically the same as we saw for color field. It's laid out slightly different. The differences are is that to set the range, I'm going to pass in an integer number. So I could be like 75 for 75 percent. But to actually set the value, I will need to convert that to a string, which I do by simply using the dot to string. Something else I found with range controls is setting the value is not enough. I typically have to do um, a dispatch event function call and I create a change event. That basically will force the, the range uh, DOM element to update itself after I've set the value. And again, I'm passing the value in here, which would all get inserted into the argument list for the JavaScript code. So it probably looks a little more complicated um, than the other one, but it's very similar the, the, um, similar to the color field. The only difference is I'm converting a number which I pass in to a string, and I have this dispatching of an event. And this is just JavaScript code to force the this range DOM element to update itself after I've changed the value. I haven't found I need to do that with the color control for some reason, but for the range, I found I did need to dispatch that change event. And if you want to check the value, you can just use expect with the to have value a matcher. And remember to convert, if you're using integers for the range, convert that to a string for this to work. Here's the code, and you'll see this in action in just a bit. What I do for the range field, I um, loop through 100 down to 0 in uh, minus 5 steps. And you'll see that range control will go from 100 and it will go down to zero. Then I go the other way. I go back from zero all the way up to 100, this time going up in steps of five. And this is really, you wouldn't really do this in um, a real test. It's just to demonstrate what's going on. All right, we're going to change gears now. What we've seen was about setting values on web forms. Now we're going to change gears and we're going to look at the submission or the submit of web forms. Now the first part is how do you actually submit the web form? It's done. There'll be a button which has a type uh, submit. You can the labels can be whatever. It doesn't matter. I've happened to call it submit, but if you look in the HTML, you see that um, its type is submit, and then. As with all buttons, you just need to do a page dot click, and that will trigger the web form submit. Now, there's a couple of different submission methods for web forms. They based around uh, if you look on the form uh, 
tag in the HTML you'll see method or and if you see get that means it corresponds to the HTTP get or the HTTPS get uh, network call that's how it will get submitted if you see post it's going to use the HTTP post uh, network method and that's how the web forms will be transmitted to the server. Now for the HTTP GET the values from the web form are going to be attached to the URL as query parameters and they should be URL encoded so space is going to be shown as percent twenty let's just um, have a look at what that's going to look like so what you'll see is in the, the test web app you'll see it's it gets sent to this echo web form get um, endpoint and you can see that all the values from the form have been attached as query parameters and you can see like here for the this is an email address the at symbol is percent 40 and in the test web app what I actually do is I don't process the values that get sent I just display them post so that was hit that was get which uses HTTP get post which uses HTTP post. There's this uh, ENC type attribute that specifies how the web form values should be encoded for submission to the server. And these are only this is only applicable with um, when the form is used in method post, which will use HTTP post. Now there's no query values in the URL when you use post. The query parameters will be in the body and the way they stored is going to depend on that ENC type setting. Now text plain is not going to do any encoding in the values. The values are inside the body of the web form when it gets submitted. So I do see people using text plane occasionally and it's not recommended. Um, you can have some weird problems if you do that. The default is to use the application and um, form URL encoded. This is the default and it does the same URL encoding as the get method does. It's just a safer way to transfer those values uh, over the network. There's also multi-part form data and this typically is used when you want to upload a file and I'll be talking about file upload in just a minute. File upload. Now on forms these days um, sometimes it's drag and drop or sometimes you'll see uh, you know a field like this where um, it wants you to choose a file uh, as a user you would hit that uh, some kind of uh, file or directory explorer will appear and then you navigate and click on the file you want what playwright does it doesn't try to pop up a file explorer for you or a directory explorer. You simply have to give it a page dot set input files, the locator for the for the field, and then you can give one or more files for you to upload. So it's pretty simple. I, I have worked with some tools where file upload was pretty complicated to get to work. The nice thing about Playwright is you simply have to give the set input files 
and uh, one or more files and it'll take care of it. Now, as I said um, in the ENC type, for file upload it uses multi-part and you can see, and you'll see a little bit of this in the demo, you can see it uses the separators with this um, generated ID here and what I did to add a little bit more um, interest to the example I have a text field and then I have the file which gets uploaded and you can see here it breaks that up into these multi parts but you, you don't really have to worry about this this is just for interest and um, you know if you play around with the test web app you you'll see this in operation All right, I'm going to include um, a number of links in the video description, which uh, if you want to dig into, um, there's a little bit about web forms, the Mozilla site goes into um, quite a bit of detail. The Playwright page command um, where you, you know, the, for the type or fill if you want to explore that. For check boxes and radio buttons, the check and uncheck, and the select, and also for that uh, file upload. So I'll put those in the video description, and then um, you can dig into them should you wish. All right, I'm going to do a really quick demo. Um, if you want to follow along on your own later on, remember as we're using the test web app, which comes with the code that you can get for these module series from GitHub, you need to remember to start the test web app before you run these tests. And for module one, I explain how to set up PM2. So if you've done that, just remember to do PM2, start, and then test web app. All right. Okay, this is um, for this module. If you look under tests in the code 06 web forms, you'll see these three spec files. Now, let's go through the first one. And what this one does is this is going to do uh, a web form, it's going to set a bunch of values. Uh, there's a wide selection of different fields here and then it's going to do the submission and we'll see that um, happen. One thing I've done, this is useful for debugging which is why I've done it. I also have tests which set each field type individually. Um, that's good for debugging if you've got issues you want to try and recreate the problem but the interest of time I'm only going to run the last test case. If you have multiple test cases in a spec file, if you just put dot only after the test, it will only run that one test. And this is something I found um, very useful for debugging. All right, let's give that a run. Okay, you can see it's set in all these different values. They've all been set here. That's, I think I've got most, if not all, of the different available types, standard types for web forms. Um, if people have done custom ones, then you know I wouldn't have them covered. But most of the ones you'll typically come up against, uh, I have in the web app which is shown here um, as an example. Okay what we'll do now let's submit that. Okay so now it's taken all those values it sent it um, to the server 
and you can see here that all these are URL encoded and these are the values we just set. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Now with this one, it's, it's similar. The only difference here is that this will be used in post instead of get. And I'm going to uh, spend a little bit of time on that um, color field and the range field. So let's run this one. Okay, this is kind of similar to the first one, but it's a lot shorter. I've left a lot of the fields off, so we can concentrate on these two at the bottom, the color uh, field and the range. Now, from the screenshot I showed you in the slides, for the color field, I just use the uh, hexadecimal values for the colors. I've simply then, you know, defined some constants around them made uh, an array and then I can just loop through them and you'll see this will change. It's just a visual way of demonstrating you know, how this thing works and for each of them it's just going to set the color then check that the color set you know matches. Once it's done that, so that's looping through all these colors, once it's done that it's going to go on to this range field down here um, and the way I've set this up, the range of this is 0 to 100 um, in the HTML. So I'm going to go from 100 down to 0. So you'll see it jump up to here, work its way down, and then it's going to go from 0 back up to 100, which means it'll just go back up. Okay, you can see this is changing here through all those different colors. Normally you would just pick one. Now it's gone on to the range and you see that it's moved across that range. So both of these I typically do through JavaScript. I just set the value through JavaScript. There's a couple of diff other things you can do. Um, you can try and build a bounding box around these controls and um, you know, operate the mouse, you know, to move the range slider and stuff like that. I usually find it's more trouble than it's worth. I just set the values through JavaScript and that normally for me is pretty reliable. All right, let's submit this one. You see it submitted that. As this is a post, the values are not in the URL. They are within the body of the web form as it got submitted but you can see here that those values did get URL encoded within the body. Okay the last one we're going to look at is the, f the file upload. So I've created a file previously here which is within, um, you know, all the other files. The selector for this one is shown here. So let's give this a run. Okay, again, I've added um, a text field just to put a little bit of complexity to the form uh, and it'll help us see um, how it's processed. So what we see here, we're at the first part of this. This is before, oops. This is before it's actually um, set any file values. So what we'll do, we'll step this. And you can see now it's executed the set input files. It's now loaded that file. It appears uh, here in the dialog and in the, um, the web app. What I actually do is, as part of that, once this is uh, attached, the file's attached, I collect some uh, 
information on the file such as its name, the size um, in bytes and then the type. This is text plain. You can use binary here. Um, it doesn't really matter. But I'm restricting it to text because um, I'll go ahead and submit this. And the reason I, I restricted the text is so I can see the result of that form submission. It used post uh, just like the previous one and you can see the, the values are in the body. The difference being is for file upload it's using multi-part and you can see it automatically puts the separators in here for you. Here's the text field that we were using which is just a first name last name and then this is the contents of the file. It's only two lines just uh, keep things manageable but that is the file upload. And that's it. So that's all I've got. That's about um, web forms and how you set the values and how you submit them. So that's all I've got. So it's bye for now.